If you take photos from the night sky and the stars and your exposure time is too long, then stars become little dashes. So for instance, in this example taken in the Swiss mountains, the stars are already little tiny lines. In this example it's better, so the stars have more a point shape and if you zoom into, you see that this really looks like stars and not like tiny little dashes. But of course the exposure time has been chosen much shorter than in the image before. So a good understanding of exposure time really matters when you take photos of the night sky. The reason why stars become more and more lines when you take longer exposures is the rotation of Earth and kind of the fixed point of that rotation is Polaris or the polar star and you see here a video taken by the Huawei P30 Pro where you nicely see how these star trails are generated in a time lapse by a sequence of shots. Now the new Google Pixel 4 takes what people call computational photography to a completely new level with its astrophotography mode. I'm going to show this in this video. I'm also going to speculate some of the technical background and uh, I hope you enjoy that little discussion here. Let's get started. So in the same way as the new iPhone 11 Pro and many other phones, the Google Pixel 4 has a night mode. And in the night mode it also has an astrophotography mode and you need to place your phone steady on a tripod and then the astro mode kicks in. So this was Monday morning, November 4th. It was 5.14 a.m. in the morning and the night sky in the morning was clear and the stars were bright. So instead of getting prepared for the day, I took my Google Pixel 4 and open the camera app. And I'm here in the normal camera mode and you see that little warning sign saying, try night sight. And night sight is a different mode in the native camera app of the Google Pixel 4. So I switched to the night sight mode and all of a sudden I saw a lot of noise in the viewfinder here, but also some, uh, at least a few blinking stars. Pushing then the shutter button, I saw an exposure time counter kicking in of uh, almost three minutes and it gives you a warning hold still. I placed before my Pixel 4 on a tripod to make sure I have a steady stand. And only if you do that, the night sky is kicking in in the way you see it now. And here it seems that the phone took the first frame. You actually see that the phone is continuously warning to not remove it yet because it's still taking frames. And you see also in the background already the Orion star constellation here. And from time to time, it also brings that little message saying fine tuning image and so on. I'll accelerate uh, my screen recording now from here on to come to the point. The process you're witnessing here is a masterpiece of computational photography. And we are going to look into the picture in a moment. But what I found when I went through that process here in the astro mode, in the night mode of the Google Pixel 4 was basically blowing me away. Let's have a look at the final picture. So this is it. I'm zooming into the night sky now into Orion star constellation. And when I saw this, and since I was taking this picture from my balcony, I decided I need to go out into my garden and try to repeat the result and see if I can catch even more from the night sky to see what this new phone is capable of. So let's switch location. Let's go down into the garden. Let's see what we catch. So taking kind of the same picture, but from the garden, not from the balcony, I was really surprised, uh, not only by the clarity and details of the tree in the lower left hand side corner, but mainly by the thousands of stars the Google Pixel 4 was catching here in the astrophotography mode. And let's zoom in for a moment to get an impression of the noise level. And by doing that, it's absolutely eye-catching that there is almost no noise. So there is not this typical grain you see when you take pictures of the night sky, even with a professional DSLR or DSLM. Stars are pinpoint sharp. Even the distinction between stars is absolutely amazing. And the clarity of this picture and the noise-free character of this picture was just blowing me away when I saw it. So I decided to go to an even darker corner of my garden and point the phone towards a different direction, this time towards the Big Dipper star constellation, just to find out if I would gain the same quality in the astro photography mode of the Google Pixel 4 here. So I did it, went to the garden, saw again a lot of noise in the picture, 
and astrophotography was switched on and then I started to take exposure and this time it was 4 minutes and 4 seconds the phone started to count down when taking exposure and different frames here. Let's accelerate the video to not get bored and look at the result. Again the process was the same as before but much longer, almost double the time and again we see in the viewfinder a lot of noise, even color noise and rain which will go away later. So here's the final picture the phone was capturing. Again, almost no noise, stars accentuated. Here is the star constellation Big Dipper. And you even see smaller Alcor sitting next to bigger Mizar in that star constellation here. So what Google is doing here in terms of algorithms clearly is a victory of computational photography. And there are even lots of DSLRs and DSLMs in the semi-professional sector which cannot beat that clarity, low level of noise and accentuation of stars than what we get from the Pixel 4. So what I want to do next is doing a little bit of technical discussion on what Google might do here in order to create these astonishing pictures from the night sky and the stars. And the first thing people find when they Google in the internet is the so-called 500 rule. And it gives the maximum exposure time for point-shaped stars. And the formula is very simple. You take 500 and you divide it by the focal length. So this is good for full frame sensors. If you are in a crop sensor camera, you have to adjust this by the crop factor. So you don't take 500 divided by focal length, but you take 500 and divide it by the product of the focal length and the crop factor. Let's look at an example. So a very common setup for astrophotography in many ways is the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Let's take it as an example. Let's take a 12 millimeter lens in the MSUICO lens system. And then we have a crop factor to full frame of two. So the full frame sensor is two times larger than the micro four thirds sensor. And that means the formula sums up to 500 divided by 12 times two, which is 24, which is close to 21 seconds. And that's the rule you apply. So if you take an exposure time of 21 seconds, according to the 500 rule, you will get pinpoint sharp stars and not stars which appear as little lines or dashes. Now, this rule is not very precise because it does not take into account a lot of other factors which are important and which I'm going to explain in a moment. And there were quite some clever people here. And as a reference, I put up the website a few years ago, they came up with a much more precise formula and also an online calculator, how to calculate the maximum exposure time if you want to have pinpoint sharp stars. So let's get into details now. So the rule these clever people invented is called the NPF rule and N is an old school symbol for aperture, P stands for pixel or more precisely for pixel size or pixel pitch and F is the focal length. And the formula looks as follows. You take 35 times the aperture plus 30 times the pixel pitch, you divide it by the focal length and then you get the shutter speed in seconds. And that's the shutter speed you should not exceed if you want to have pinpoint sharp stars. There is a crop sensor equivalent of that formula and again it's the same formula as the 500 rule but you have to adjust for your crop factor. So basically your focal length has to be always converted into a full frame equivalent and then you are good to go. Let's look at our example from before. So let's look at the Olympus here and the 12 millimeter Mzuiko lens and then the formula looks as follows. So according to the NPF rule you have 35 times 4, if you want to take photos with an aperture of 4, you have 30 times 3.32 micrometer. And that's the pixel size here. You have to look this up in the internet. And then you divide this by, again, the full frame equivalent of the 12 millimeter Mzuiko lens, which is 24 millimeters. And you end up at roughly 10 seconds. Now, if you compare this to the 500 rule, it's substantially smaller in terms of exposure time, what you can take here. And that's actually one reason why people came up with this NPF rule because they found out if I universally apply, no matter what setup I have in terms of camera, focal length and other parameters, the 500 rule, I might end up with an exposure time which is still too long and my stars end up as little lines or dashes. So there is an app you can use on the iPhone and I think it's also available on Android, which is called Photo Pills. And that basically does all the calculations for you. So you don't have to become an expert in these kind of calculations. Just uh, choose that app, go into photo pills, and then you have a bunch of things you can do here. The section you want to consult here is spot stars. So go on that one here. 
Then you can first choose your camera. So this is on the Sony A7R Mark IV because that's one of the cameras I currently use. And you can choose here from all kinds of different cameras. Let's go to the Olympus. So here are the most recently used, by the way, in the upper section. And I was playing with small sensors. That's why you see a very old school Casio Exilim here. And uh, let's go to Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. And then uh, we have the 12 millimeter lens here. You see here two sections, 35 millimeter equivalent is the full frame, that's 24 millimeters, and real is the 12 millimeters as engraved on your lens. You can also choose a teleconverter if you want, but we don't have it in our example here, so I go to done, and then my focal length is fixed. On the aperture, we had an aperture of f4, but you can choose here even down to 0.95, which I think is probably only applicable to a very recent uh, Nikon lens and to the Noctilus from Leica. But we have in our example an F of four. So we choose F4 and go to done. Here you can uh, become more precise in your formula by looking at the declination, but that's something if you're not used to astrophotography, don't get your hands on, just leave it as it is. It will be okay in terms of calculation. And then here is the last section, which is the accuracy. And you can say barely noticeable traces, which is the default section, or you go to accurate and accurate gives you the best possible calculation. And now you already see here in the section NPF rule that this app is saying it's 9.56 seconds or close to 10 seconds, which is the result we obtained by a manual calculation. So these kind of apps are useful if you want to get into astrophotography. Let's return to the Google Pixel 4. And the first thing we need are the specs of the main camera. And we have a one divided by 2.55 inch type sensor here. And type is an important word because there's a lot of confusion out there with people who think that one over 2.55 inch is the diagonal of the sensor. And that's not what it is. There are certain conventions going back by years why certain sensors are called in certain ways. And this is not the diagonal of the sensor. The second information we have here is the resolution. The resolution boils down to 12.2 megapixels. We have an aspect ratio of four to three and we have a pixel size of 1.4 micrometers. And that's an important information. Some people call this the pixel pitch and some people even claim there is a difference between the pixel size and the pixel pitch. Believe me for the time being, that's the parameter we need. And you can look this up in the internet, for instance, at DxOMAR, where you find all kinds of nice tests and, uh, you know, informations about cameras in general, but also smartphone cameras. And uh, the specs are not provided by Google natively, so Google is not very outspoken about the specs of their cameras and lenses. But uh, you find it somewhere, and I found it, and that's why it is here. 27 millimeter focal length is already the full frame equivalent. And then we have an aperture of f1.7. And this one has to be treated with care because if you think about a DSLM and a DSLR with a wide open lens mounted on it with an aperture of f1.7, then you get a very shallow depth of field. But that's not what happens if you take a photo with a smartphone. Typically everything is sharp from the foreground to the background, which means an f1.7 means something differently if we have it as a reference on a smartphone when we compare it into the context of normal photography. And I come back to this point later on. Then we have an illustration of the sensor here of the Google Pixel 4 and uh, we want to figure out what the diagonal is. There are various ways how you can do this and uh, you can do calculations, you can find comparable sensors with that type where the diagonal is specified. Unfortunately, as I said, Google is not giving us that data. At least I didn't find it, but that's what it is. Believe me for the time being, it's around seven millimeters. And again, we have the resolution in the horizontal and the vertical axis here on the sensor. Now doing a little mathematics, and this is nothing more than the triangle formula from Pythagoras, you can actually figure out that the height of the sensor, if the diagonal is seven millimeters and the aspect ratio is four to three, must be 4.2. So we note this down here next to the sensor and uh, the horizontal length actually is 5.6 millimeters. Again, according to that formula here. And if you wanna stop your video for a moment, you will figure out that this is the correct calculation, but you can also leave it with me and just believe me. We could easily do some type of back testing and see if we have done the right calculations. And since this is 
pre-specified to us, the 1.4 micrometers. This is coming from external sources, so not based on any cal calculation I was doing here. We can try to re-engineer that figure. And the way we would do this typically is there is a formula for the pixel size or pixel pitch. And that's actually the size in terms of millimeters on the horizontal axis, which is 5.6 millimeters divided by the resolution along the horizontal axis, which is 4032 pixels. And if we divide this and multiply it by 1000 to bring it up to the unit of micrometers, we end up at 1.39 micrometers, which is more or less the 1.4, which we got specified from external sources. So somehow these calculations make sense and uh, we can be satisfied and move on to the next step. Now, if we look at the Google Pixel 4 photo here, and as I said before, it's a terrific photo, pinpoint sharp stars, then we want to apply the NPF rule. And again, the N is the aperture, P is the pixel size, F is the focal length. And if we do this natively, we end up at a calculation according to the rule like 35 times 1.7, which is the aperture plus 30, times 1.4, which is the pixel size in micrometers, divided by the full frame equivalent focal length, which is 27 millimeters. And that boils down to 3.8 seconds, which seems a bit short if I compare this with my intuition. So I was contemplating and thinking about crop factors and aperture. And there is actually a very interesting tutorial with high educational value out there from uh, Tony and Chilzia Northrup, which I will link below the video in the info box. And there you find all the information you need. So what I did next is I said, let's stop thinking about an aperture of f1.7. Let's stop thinking about 3.8 seconds and let's reshuffle the elements in that formula. And uh, remember what I said to you at the beginning when we contemplated about the aperture, every picture you take with a Google Pixel 4 or any other smartphone is sharp from the foreground to the background in contrast to you know the manufacturers giving you this wide open aperture in the specs and something is not matching here so let's find out what it is and the next information we need for this is the so-called crop factor and the crop factor is officially defined as the full frame diagonal for a full frame sensor divided by the diagonal of a crop sensor and in our particular case this means if you look at the full frame camera and the diagonal it's give or take depending on the manufacturer close to 43 millimeters and the diagonal for the Google Pixel 4 we before figured out to be 7 millimeters. So if we divide those two numbers, we end up at a crop factor of around 6. We are going to backtest the 6 later on based on the metadata in the photo taken by the Google Pixel 4. So don't be worried, this is not overly speculative. It's all based on facts and information we have and calculations which make sense. Now, if we go back to the NPF rule and apply the new insight we just gained, then we have to calculate the full frame equivalent aperture of an f1.7 in a smartphone like this, and we multiply it by the crop factor, which takes us to a full frame equivalent aperture of around 10. So we replace this in the NPF formula, and we replace the 1.7 by 10, and then we end up at 14.5 seconds. And this is actually now matching my intuition because I think give or take 15 seconds pointing your smartphone, let's say in the manual mode towards the night sky will give you still point shaped stars and not these little dashes or lines. We'll later see that the 14.5 seconds is close to information we find in the metadata of photos taken with the Google Pixel 4 in the Astro mode in the native camera app. Here we go. This is the photo again taken by the Pixel 4. And in the metadata, we have some interesting information. First of all, you see here the 27 millimeters again, which is the full frame equivalent. That's why it says focal length in 35 millimeter film of that lens on the native camera. And you also see here another information, which is called the focal length. And that's the focal length if you would not think in terms of full frame equivalence. And if we look at those two numbers, we can backtest our crop factor which I just before calculated as six. And the way to do this is you just divide the full frame focal length by the focal length as given in the specs here, which is 4.38. And if we divide that, we end up at six again. Magic, right? Looking further into the metadata, we get some more interesting information. And this is the shutter speed value. The shutter speed value here is 16 seconds. 
And now if we go back to that screen recording video from the Google Pixel 4 where I showed you taking that night shot took between 2 minutes and 45 seconds and 4 minutes plus some seconds. Then it is interesting that in the metadata actually the photo says it has only an exposure time of 16 seconds. And the only way to explain this is that Google with you know all their intelligence and research figured probably out that for that combination of sensor and lens in the Google Pixel 4 16 seconds is the maximum exposure time you can take for still having point shaped stars and not stars becoming little lines. And this is now matching the 14.5 seconds we had before by our own manual calculations where we said applying the NPF rule takes us up to a level of give or take 15 seconds, which is close to the 16 seconds here. So the 16 seconds seems to be the magic boundary. If you go beyond that, you actually will end up with little lines and not with, with point shape stars. We could also apply this now backwards to backtest another quantity we had before, namely the aperture. And uh, just a moment ago, I calculated via the crop factor of 6 that an aperture of f1.7 should actually be or relate to an aperture of f10. And if we use the NPF formula and apply, you know, the uh, parameters we have here, we can backward calculate uh, the aperture and that ends up at an aperture of f11, which again is close to our manual calculation. So I think what we have presented here so far makes a lot of sense and is in many ways consistent with information from external sources and helps us to contemplate what Google is doing in their computational photography here to end up with a terrific picture of the night sky as we saw it before. Let's conclude and wrap up. So the Google Pixel 4 took more than four minutes for the astrophoto which we looked at in the astrophotography mode. And here are the screenshots of that phone. So we have four minutes and four seconds here. And of course the hint or warning, hold it still because the astro mode is only kicking in when you mount it on a tripod. Now in the metadata of the photo taken in the astro mode, which took us more than four minutes, we actually find an exposure time or shutter speed value of 16 seconds. And that means in the conclusion, it seems that the Google Pixel 4 applies the same technology as all other smartphones with a comparable photography mode I know, meaning it you know, takes several frames and then composes those frames into one final still image. And uh, since we have 16 seconds per frame as a maximum here and then several frames, that means that the Google Pixel somehow internally via some clever algorithm is almost a digital astro tracker because over four minutes, the Google Pixel 4 will, will know how Earth rotation is influencing the next frame to be taken. And then finally, calculating this backwards to compile all those frames into one final image with a very low level of noise, with pinpoint sharp stars, and a lot of differentiation and accentuation between the different stars in the constellations we see on a night sky. And this is just remarkable and a very impressive piece or proof of concept for computational photography. So I hope you enjoyed my little journey into computational photography with the Google Pixel 4. And I should say what I've found here is superior to every other smartphone I've seen so far. And I've seen a lot of them and most of them have been very impressive like the iPhone 11 Pro in its night mode. But you can only go up to 30 seconds there or the Huawei P30 Pro or other phones, you know, impressive phones. But what Google is presenting here is mind blowing and is really the next level of computational photography. If you like my video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you like the content I'm producing, I would be happy if you subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and peace out.